Yo. What's up, people? What's going on, y'all, man? Welcome to TRC. This is the Report Card. I'm your host, Dane Diddy. And your co-host, Solo Yomingo. Yeah, man. And we got five albums for y'all this week, man. We got Big Sean and Jane Aiko, 2088. We got g Easy When It's Dark Outside. We got DMX, It's Dark and Hell Is Hot. We got Nori, Drunk Uncle. And we also got August Alcina, this thing called Life, man. But uh, before we get into that, how you been this week, Solo Yomingo? Man, same old, same old, regular, regular working, reviewing music, same old, same old. Yeah, what, what you think of these Drake cuts, man? You, you know it was coming, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I caught up with them. Um, Pop Style is not a bad track, but it's not the usual Drake banger. I'm, I'm used to, like, when I usually hear, by the time I see that the internet's buzzing and I finally click on a link or one of my boys, Nino, the bro or somebody hit me on the text and comment on the Drake track and uh, when I find my way to it uh, you know I usually it's hard to deny it you know even though I'm, I'm a still critic critic him or uh, critique on him you know what I'm saying but yeah. it's hard to deny but th- these were like they wasn't as as hard to deny like <laughs> you know what I'm saying first of all I was hyped I was hyped when I seen Hov and um, Hov and Ye was on but how track. disappointed were you when you found out Jay only had two bars? Right, that's that that that's what I'm saying. That that was the <laughs> man. It was like, and then they was promoting it with with the Dream Team poster of Bird, Magic, and um and uh and Jordan. You know what I'm saying so it's like, how, man, how did, it was disappointing. How, um, how did you feel about the Chain and Tatum line? It, Man, my <laughs> my lady pointed that line out to me. Like it just went right by. I didn't even catch it. Like I was so hyped. Trying to hurry up and get to holes, part of the, you know what I'm saying? That it it just went right over. But I went back and listened to it, and I was like, man, that was weak. So Drake's verse was weak. Jay was disappointed because he only gave us two lines, two bars. Yeah. And then um, I had to go back and re-listen to Yay because I, I, man, I, I don't know what it is. I feel like I, he's losing me as a fan, or he's losing people as fans. If we I keep, mean, it's not it's not the same Kanye anymore at all. I, I, I will say that it's not the same Kanye. But you, but you know, I was still rocking with him. Even it, it's just more disappointing now that we're really, really digging into these files, and I'm seeing that he's getting so much help with writing. Yeah, you know what and, I'm saying and the conceptions and, and yeah, right. And then it's like he talks so arrogant about his being a man and his skill, being a genius, right and. and then it's like he he gets a lot of help. You know what I'm saying. Well, I will say I I like the dance track. Uh, it, it's it's just got that kind of vibe that make you want to move, make you want to dance. Uh, the the pop style now the version we j- just heard before we start we went live with him by itself. Right. I like the I like that verse. That like, like I told crazy. you then, if he would have put that out, you know, no hype of a dream team track with Ye on it, Jay on it. It would have been just the pop style, his first verse, and then that second one we just heard. Yeah. It, I think that one would have probably been a better a, a better a better hit. You know what I'm saying? I yeah, think I mean you you put it in the context like all right, it's Drake and Jay Z and, and Kanye. It didn't live up to it. They already Drake Drake and Kanye them did not tracks together. Like you got forever. And you think back to both of their verses. Right. I used to have big dreams. You know right, what I'm right. saying? Like, nah, yeah, they killed previous joints. So, yeah, you, what you expect. So, how, how does saying, this stack up to that? Nah, it didn't. That's exactly. what it did. Yeah. It, it didn't stack up to it at all. Um, it, it, Going back and listening to Kanye's verse, it, it, it's catchy. It's cool, you know. But uh, Drake didn't do much for, for his own track, um, for Pop Style. For the dance joint, uh, it got a cool rhythm, like you said on that. Um I feel like it's a in between from from the work and Hotline Bling, like something in between those two. Well, well, they see Hotline Bling and work went number one, so right. it, you you might want to throw one of those on albums just to be safe. He he got some big shoes to fill on this album, especially with all the stuff that happened with Meek and everything. This album got to be crazy, right. or else or else everybody gonna be coming for him for the whole summer. Right. Um. So you 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 feel those two tracks is gonna make the album? Uh, I think Dance will make the album. Um, and unless unless he couldn't come up with another track, the the, the other one, what is it called? Uh, Pop style. Pop style. Yeah. <laughs> if that, I don't know. I don't. I don't really care. You won't hear me playing that song probably ever again. Okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but let's go ahead and get into the first album, man. Twenty eighty eight, man. Big Shine 
and Jane Aiko. I hope I'm saying her name right. I've always said it like that. Jane Aiko, man. It, they, they're they calling those so, themselves 2088, man. And, okay. You know, everybody knows Big Sean's from the D, and Jane Aiko's from Los Angeles, California, man. I personally remember her from uh, B2K. Like, she was around during B2K. She was with Chris Stokes back then. She was okay. like a kid, and she could sing back then. But, uh, what what you think of this album, man? I, I like it. Um, I'm of course I'm gonna be a little biased. I, I'm a big Sean fan, so I I like it. But um, they have good chemistry together. I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe I'm late. Maybe they are dating, and we don't know. But I don't I don't believe. Well, that, that I don't think that's that's not the word on the street. Okay, I'm but not they, sure. their chemistry, especially from the music on this album, is it's like I, I I wouldn't be surprised if they end up dating. Well, I, I, what I will say is that it's, it's only eight songs. The chemistry on the album is there. You can tell it's there, but at the same time, I do feel like the writing isn't top notch at times. Like there's sometimes Sean, you know, holds it down and she doesn't necessarily keep it up to par with her with the writing ability. Um, the production on the album is good. You know, um, as far as the standout joints, I like Push It. I like the talk show. I like, uh, you know, other than that, <laughs> to be honest with you, I think most of the songs are okay. It's uh. It's not like a really standout project, and it, I, it was kind of a letdown. I don't feel like they may have took too much time putting it together, though. Well, it actually depends. Um, you, you, I think you're looking at it as a letdown because you're such a big Sean fan, uh, and you're expecting more. And then she, she has a great voice, so you're expecting more. Well, from her. I mean, because her album is pretty dope too. Ex- exactly. But if you're just listening to good music, this 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 is a good project. I, I liked it personally. Uh, I like Deja Vu. Uh, I like uh, Two Minute Warning is dope uh, That's a joint That detailed KC and JoJo I didn't hear them much uh, they, they're, they're just helping Fill in the hook right. And I understand the concept You know football Two Minute Warning We about to, we, we gotta hurry up Before yeah. we get to the end zone. I, I still wasn't feeling the song Like I, I didn't like KC and JoJo's feature Okay. On that song, uh, details usually a producer, so I don't know if he really had anything to do with the vocal. He, maybe he did, but I, I wouldn't feel, like talk show to me was it was like a conceptual song. I, I like that. I like that also. I felt that was um, I thought that was creative. Yeah, I actually felt like that's how the whole album basically was like it was i was hoping show. it was I, I was hoping the whole album would have been like kind of like that don't get me wrong it's all like relationship based and stuff yeah. like that but like like the hook for selfish i don't really care for it and like i, I don't know man I, I gave it an 83 man i gave it a c you know i think people should I, I think you should check it out you know make the decision yourself but i will say deja vu it used the escape sample softest place on earth and it was a great way to use it the, the way the producers flipped the samples was pretty good uh, what would you get the album? Um, being that the album has the same sound throughout the whole entire album, I mean, sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes that's a bad thing. In this case, it was a good thing. In my, in my opinion, it was a good flow. It, you know, it was good mellow music. I gave it a C plus. That's an eighty six. Not not too far off, man. Yeah, it, it wasn't poppy. Nothing really commercial, but uh, it's definitely a good listen. Okay, G Easy, man. He's a rapper from Oakland, California. He's been rapping for a while now. Uh, you know, he felt like the the look that he had wasn't working for his character, so he ended up giving up the baggy jeans and Jordans and stuff like that for like late 1950 rockers look, and it started gaining him attention. You know, he ended up on tour with Lil Wayne and up on tour with Drake, Two Chains and stuff like that. And you know, I think that G Easy is uh, consistent. <laughs> lyrically throughout the whole album I'm not gonna say he's the best lyricist I do think he's consistent I, I will say that I had a problem identifying a lot of originality what I will say his strongest point was was him talking about his personal issues in the songs right. and that made him seem a little original don't get me wrong there's a lot of other rappers that do that too exactly. but since his story is different cause you know no two people's story is different that's where his originality came from uh I think he had a lot of guest appearances on this album and I feel like whoever you know I know he signed an RCA I'm not sure who's doing things at RCA whoever's investing whoever was, in this kid they they did a lot to make sure right. that the 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 features would help help, help features, out the album a lot production Big like Sean the, Chris Brown Tory Lanez Too Short E40 Kaylani right. and, 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 and um, it's funny you mentioned that you could tell from from the looking at the features it's not just like new names 
They yeah, made yeah, sure definitely. that they got like two sure E40 like uh, veterans to like give them a, a, a feature. You know what I'm saying? So to give them a certain sound. Yeah. Um, so it's like whoever inv- investing their money in this guy, they making sure that the investment is uh, well off, basically. Yeah, they, and they got some of the top name producers. I, I do want to point out one thing, man. O- order more. It sounds just like Bake Sale. Yep. And yep. it, it, it was bothering me, like, to the point where I couldn't stand the song. I mean, <laughs> and I'm at the point, I don't like Bake Sale either. But it's just because <laughs> I don't I don't like that. Like, back in the day, is that you don't do that. Bake you don't sell dope, you don't sell two different artists the same track. The same track. You know, that's on DJ Spins. You know, he's it's the same melody. And, 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 and then the well, way well, they kind of do the well, hook is well, somewhat similar, too. Sometimes it depends on time and also, uh, you know, it might be some that already had made my album. And you already had used it or something like that, but but I but see the, what you're but saying. The, pro- the producer basically produced the same track twice, right? So I, I, I have a problem with that. You know what I'm saying? We can go through all my beats, and you'll never hear the same beat twice. I don't, you know, that's not cool. I mean, yeah. that's a pet peeve as a producer. I see. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I wasn't a huge, you know, you know, fan of that. I but feel agree. I mean, I can understand. The production on his album is kind of dark. I will say that. I mean, you know, it, it has this kind of, you know, light areas, but for the most part, it's, it's dark. It's got kind of more like of a. a when like it's a, dark out, that's the name of the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the name of the album. So maybe he was, uh, you know, trying to portray that. Yeah, I, I do like a couple. Uh, my standout cuts on the joint. I like random. Which is like the first joint on the album. I like drifting with Tory Lanez and Chris Brown. That joint goes hard. I'm that surprised. That joint is hard. I'm I don't know why he didn't do a, a video. Single, right. Yeah, he need to do a video for that ASAP. Right. Um, I like of all things with Too Short. Too Short killed that joint. Um, uh, everything would be okay with Kaylani. And, and you, uh, for you this, you can definitely hear the sa- the Too Short Oakland sound in yeah. that in that um in, on that track. Well, he's from that area too. So right. you know, I mean, so he grew up on that. And um, you know, for for this with I'm nobody, I like that track too. And um, don't get it twisted, nothing nothing to me. E40 and, and Keisha, and Cole. Keisha Cole, they did their thing on that right. track too. I just wouldn't call it one of my standouts, man. Right. I, I wasn't I wasn't big on that one. I was big on the joint drifting and um, for, I like the uh, uh, order more, but I like the version that it's also on iTunes. I don't know why uh, it's, it didn't make the album the 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 joint with um with Gotti. Yo, Yo Gotti. Gotti Yo Gotti's on the feature um, I don't know why They make the album cut But um, I like that track Even though Jim without him It's dope But I, I prefer the other one What, what grade you give it man? Uh, I gave uh, I gave him my 85 That's a C Just because it's consistent It's, n- it's not n- It's not whack But it's, n- it's nothing different It's nothing that stands out Really I, I gave it an 87, man. That's a B minus. Okay. It, it's not that far from you. It, it is it's very consistent. And, and the features help out the, the tracks a lot. I, I do like the hooks that he came up with. And, and he's got a dope... He does have a dope flow. You know what I'm saying? It's just... The only thing original it more was this... Like I said, the way he dresses, the style. I, and I, I can see the influence from him going on tour with Drake and opening up for Drake a lot from uh you know from yeah, his he, style. he has took a couple of aspects yeah. of them and, right. and flew fuse it into what he does into what he's doing um you know I, I guess he could thank Drake for opening that door you know because um with his look not not to be rapid racist or anything like that but you know we come we go we we come from the 90s from that from that era so with his look a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't let let them in, let them in the door, you know and I'm saying so. If it wasn't for people like Drake opening certain doors, you know what I'm saying? Nah, he he would have got that off, man. Yellow Wolf is doing somewhat of the same look now, you know what I'm saying? But it's like I don't think a black rapper could get away with doing that, like dressing like that. And I mean, it's it's not like he don't rap like he's hip hop. It's just the dressing thing. It's like a 1950s right, rocker look. You got a look. James Dean, uh, yeah. a John Travolta in Greece look like. Exactly. Like but you, you got to I mean, prove. Even in the video we we checked out uh, a little while ago when he was uh, when he was uh, was talking about his uh, his story before yeah. he was famous. I mean, he was on. Uh, he, he he was basically he looked like Machine Gun Kelly kind of. Yeah. You know what I'm saying yeah. like that's kind of what he reminded me of. But um, it's kind of tough. Like even with you got to be unique. Right. You got to be different, and he looked different, so he you know he now he's a getting his shot. Right. All uh, right, Noriega, man. Super Noriega. Slime. Noriega, everybody know Noriega, man. Nori is from Left Rack. 
<laughs> Left Rack City, Queens, New York, man. That's he's dude, he's man. Uh, part of the duo Capone and Noriega, man, from the early 90s, man. What, War what you, Report and yeah. all that. Yeah, man. He had, you know, NOR used to stand for niggas on the run eating. Now we on the run eating, but I'm not sure if it still stands for that anymore. He says it's now on the run eating, so he's still on the run eating. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what you think of this album, man? Drunk Uncle. Man, uh, I'm biased, man. That's my guy, man. He's funny, man. He, he, he comes from our era, you know what I'm saying? So... Man, that's my guy. I, I love this tape, man. I gave it a C plus. That's an 85. Um, I love the skits on it because he comes from that pun, you know what I'm saying, with the funny skits. They're like, dude's a character. I love his character all around. Uh, his verses is dope because uh, he brings a lot of a lot of stories he told in his verses. So I, I thought that was dope. Um, he don't have the best flow. But uh, for this era we in now, if, if we could listen to certain people, man, we could definitely listen to Nori. Yeah, I, I mean, he, he look, Noriega's never really had one of the best flows, but he's he's had a unique delivery since he came in. I think throughout the whole project, Drunk Uncle album, he's very consistent with his raps. The, the, I, thought so. I gave it an 83. I gave it a C. Also, the the only reason it, it took a knot for me, I, I didn't care for a lot of the production. And I didn't like a lot of the hooks. Like I, I did like the guest appearances. Like he he pulled the hell out of them guest appearances, man. Like he had everybody on this joint. Jada Kiss, Capone, Fat Joe. Like that's one of my favorite joints. Still getting it. Yeah, that joint go hard. Uh, <laughs> I out like of still my mind. It. I like I like moments. Moments too. Um, the joint. Uh, my my business. My my business. Oh, uh, well, get money. Yeah, get yeah, money. I like that joint. I, I didn't see that's a, that's one of the joints. I'm like, I like his verses. But you I don't like, like the, the hook. hook. But it, it, it's different. He, like you said, he has a, a awkward delivery. Yeah, and I, I love make him pay. That's my favorite joint on the album, man. With uh, Killer Mike, Sleepy Brown. That's like one of my favorite joints. Oh that, yeah, that joint go hard. Uh, I like the, the I like buckets also. The joint with uh, Manolo Rose and French. I didn't like the hook. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Like that's that's pretty much the the whole synopsis for the album. Like you know, it, shout out to him having Cool G rap on the on, on the yeah, album. Yeah, man. seriously, seriously, man. Cool Royal G rap. Flush, Nature. Like he got some like even rough. a joint with T Pain. Like it's I like the song, but I'm not a really big fan of the hook. Yeah, like the the tracks to me that were like moments and and make them pay and st- you know stand you know get still getting it. Like those are the like most complete tracks to me right you know I, I was looking forward to a jada verse man on that still getting it because that that beat i could hear jada on, on tearing that joint down but uh but i think it would have been like over saturating the, the the track even because jada was already on the on the hook yeah but fat john capone did they thing on that yeah like, they, they definitely they, did they held it down but yeah I, like i said i'm not a huge fan of the production and not a huge fan of the hooks but I don't know if this was really perceived to be an album. Like it came out as a mixtape, and then you know by the weekend it was on Apple Music, like it was an album. So yeah, I mean it's this era, this era we in, everything ends up being a, a, a album slash mixtape because everything has the internet, everything goes online. I mean I hate to you know compare this to his other projects, but like it, it's it's kind of tough because lyrically it's still there, right? But like Noi, he's got better hooks, like classic nor like body in the trunk nori yeah like like you said the setup for this journey is not an album setup this is a mixtape setup yeah yeah and and i i really don't like the skits but i didn't count the skits against man, what grade i, I gave i love the skits man <laughs> oh I, I, well i like i was telling you earlier this week man i'm locked in on his podcast also so it's like i'm yeah shout I'm, out to noise podcast we're man. drink champs man uh it's just i'm i'm a fan of him like you know what i'm saying so i could listen to him and then the the people he's bringing on is, is, is entertaining, and they're showing you a different side, maybe telling you things or speaking on things that we as fans had no idea. Like you know, like he was talking about how his video ended up being one point three. It started up, it started out eight hundred and fifty. But what, what, the, what, what video was that? Uh, uh, Super joint, Thug. Yeah, out in uh in the desert in the desert with yeah, uh, hype thug. Williams. Yeah, he, he he was saying that hype was uh was ordering uh I think Philippe's or Mr. Childs or something like that. He was ordering it from 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 New York or whatever, having it flunk, flew in or whatever. And this was going on his budget, uh, a whole bunch of liquor and all that. And he ain't know he was paying for it till the end of it. But Chug, damn. 
yeah so it's little things like that that we know you know fights all kind of things or whatever but i find it entertaining you know i come from that era so I, anytime i get to hear a little more information about those dudes that i looked up to or followed you know what i'm saying I, I think that's dope yeah absolutely man everybody check out that drunk uncle uncle man and that drink drink partners the drink champ drink tramps drink champs august alcina august alcina this thing called life august is from new orleans louisiana that's actually his real name too august okay. anthony alcina jr like it's triple a okay <laughs> triple a <laughs> You know, man, and uh, August, man, he had a he had a rough upbringing. Uh, I'm not gonna get into it as a very long story. If you want to get into it, just look it up. But he was inspired to sing uh, from Sister Act Two, the okay. movie. Okay. And uh, you know, after his brother got shot, he decided to take music way more serious. Got with a management team, relocated to Atlanta, Georgia, and the rest is history, man. You know, I love this shit with uh with uh Trinidad James and. I love the fact that this album, man, he, he's got some, uh, this album is about, like, life, the uh, the good, the bad, the ups and downs, everything, man, and it, and it, it it's, you, you actually get to really go through the journey with him and, like, some right. of the struggles he's going through, like, he talks about him, how him and his mom don't, don't communicate anymore, he, st- he still talks about how his brother's death is bothering him, and, and, like, why he's still doing what he's doing, and, and still trying to inspire kids on songs like Change and uh, American Dream. And he's got some real deep songs like Song Cry and and uh, Dreamer and like Hip Hop Hollywood. Like, yo, I really like this kid, man. This dude is dope, man. Yeah, uh, this is my first time actually listening to a whole project from him. Um, I heard his singles on the previous joint, like when he first popped. But, um,. I guess I I, I, I was kind of shying away from him being because I was kind of comparing him to Trey Songs. A lot a lot of people were. When I first heard him, I thought it was Trey Songs okay. the very first time. Right. But and once then, you listen to him, you start to see the textual differences. Right. Like, they have some similarities, but they they are very different. Then then after uh, doing a little re, uh, research on and speaking to you about it, and you telling me about his background and his uh, coming up. Um, you know, it, it made a little more sense. I had to actually change my grade a little bit because th- this is him. I, I can't say that he's sounding like everybody else because this is, uh, you know, this thing called life. This is his life. So um, yeah, he, he does rap a little bit on his album, though. Yeah. Like his flow is reminiscent of, of like kind of rapping. Right. Like I guess you would say somewhat trap soul ish. Right. But he's still singing it. You know what I'm saying? I, but I actually like the way he pulled it off. But if he if he had to hit hit a note, I bet you he could. Yeah. Because you know yeah. <laughs> he yeah, got yeah. a dope voice. But um, wh- why I do it? I like that joint. Wayne did his thing on that uh, on that feature. He definitely. Uh, I don't like the fact Wayne repeated himself. But other than that, I like a, a couple bars he repeated itself. But other than that, I do think he he he. he did his thing on that joint what do you mean like the back to back uh like they'll they'll say a bar and then say the same bar again yeah, and then use it to go into something else yeah like you know i put that dick in the stomach and all the good lord i put yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. And then I, he said I mean but then like we keep speaking about man this, is, this guy throws the party and then he gets left out man <laughs> who knows how long he been doing that but then now drake does it future does it you know what I'm saying it, I, I don't like it when any of them do it either. Right? Hey, shit, shit is number one played on iTunes. Yeah, but what you <laughs> what you end up giving this album? Um, the thing I called up, Life, man. I ended up giving it an 88, a B. I like uh, standout joints to me. It's a joint with Wayne. I love. I like the video. I like the joint uh, Been Around the World with Chris Brown. Dope. Yeah, yeah. So those are the two that like really stood out. But the whole project is pretty pretty well rounded, I should say. Yeah, I like I like my standout joints are job why I do it, uh, with Lil Wayne also change dreamer, song cry and then the encore. Um, I love Polo to Don man, that that's that dude right there, and uh, I I, I picked those songs before I actually knew that a couple of them were actually singles because I. I when I try to listen to an album, if I don't know what the singles are, I just try to listen to the album and, and, figure, and figure out, out what what's you think. dope. Right. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I meant to shout that joint out too. Job. Anthony ha- Hamilton. That's another yeah, singer, very bro. Soulful, you know very soulful. I'm saying? Yeah. So. I don't know if I him. said the grade. I gave it an 89. So we just one point off. Well, yeah. yeah. And uh, Jada, you know, I feel like Jada really always does his thing on, on features or verses or whatever. So. Yeah, definitely. Our DMX, man. DMX. It's dark and hell aside. DMX was born in Mount Vernon, New York, but he was raised in Yonkers, New York. 
he originally named himself after the DMX drum machine, but he ended up changing that to, to actually mean Dark Man X. And uh, DMX was Dark signed Man to, X, Dog Man X. Yeah, yeah, it's got a lot of different meanings, man. He got a big tattoo of his his first dog Boom on his back, you know. And DMX, you know, he was signed to uh, Def Jam, Def Jam Records after Leo Cohen heard him uh, rapping with his mouth shut, wired shut. Right. And there's a long story behind that. I actually know it, but it'll be too long. If you actually it, it, read it, his book. There was he was just on Nori's podcast uh, actually last episode and kinda spoke on it a little bit. How actually Puff passed on him. Yeah. And um try to get back to him, try to, you know, uh yeah, a few lace weeks later, pockets. like, yo man, I, I <laughs> lace your pockets, man. Just and you know, X was like, nah, I'm straight. And just kept it moving. Yeah, yeah. Def Jam was definitely the best move because right. DMX wasn't built for no shiny suits at that time. Because you all. see what he had did to the locks. Right. You know, because I heard they were called the Warlocks, and then he, you know, they came out with the shiny suits and everything. But uh, you know, when when this album dropped, it was I want to say it was '98, and everything like Puffy had the whole game commercialized. Right. Everybody was wearing shiny suits, right. and I, I remember watching Rap City, and then this video came on for "Get At Me, Dog," Ooh, and the way it started so raw. was Irv Gotti saying, "Yo, let's take it back to the motherfucking streets," and then "Get At Me, Dog" comes yeah, on, black and white, and it was not. It was so hard, right? It was like it was like a diamond, and everything else was like sapphire because everything else was soft everybody's dancing in videos right. and then you got somebody rapping crazy rough black and white dogs all over the place everybody in the joint hoodied out scullies you know what i'm saying like man overall he, dmx single-handedly dmx single-handedly shifted hip-hop back to the hard shit like, right right single-handedly man right oh man i can't i Man, that energy, just listening to this album brought me back to that time, man. That energy, man, it was so dope back at that time, man. What, what, what he did for the game, what he did to the game. Was Yo, it, like, even his intro. <laughs> like, when he, he rapped on the intro, like, dog, yeah, that's my man's in there. Like, that was so, so different. So what my man's doing? <laughs> right, right. right <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was just so different. You know, this is the first time we got introduced to Swiss Beats, yeah. you know, on Rough Riders Anthem. You know, actually, I don't know if that's actually accurate because I know Swiss produced All For The Love on a Locks album. I'm not sh- I feel like these albums came out around the same time. I'm not 100% sure. Right. But this is the real first time we got introduced because cause All For The Love wasn't a single. Rough Riders Anthem was a single. Right. You know, Dame Grease and PK produced the majority of this album. Irv Gotti helped out here and there. Yo, when I first heard Stop Being Greedy, <laughs> like... A rapper rapping like you know the beat changes when his identity changed yeah like that was so Man. dope to me at the time like when he did that with damien when he's like yeah he's rapping up like his yeah. voice but he, like and i was gas because character. uh i was a little kid yeah. and, and <laughs> I, I begged my mom to go buy the cd when it first came out and i pick up the album and number nine I got my name on it right yeah <laughs> was, that's dope that's you know dope. what i'm saying but like truthfully man i love it and then don't even get like niggas and started something with mace and the locks feature was crazy that feature was dope the, the production this whole album dane grease pk they killed it man yeah yeah like especially like you gotta judge this production with the 90 1998 mindset right you know what i'm saying because it, it was just different but hip-hop was but different. not only the mindset x's character it fits x's character even like from the from crime story you know what i'm saying uh, atf like everything like not one track not one verse in this on this album i question like would this man actually do <laughs> like <laughs> i never questioned that because this sound this sounds like this is him like all yeah. the way like everything uh, him on Damon it sounded like he talking to himself basically or whatever you know what I'm saying yeah uh, but he, ch- he actually changes his voice right he changes the character you know and that and that's so dope and and then it's like a lot of these songs are like poetry like you know what I'm saying let me fly look through my eyes like you know I can feel it like if you actually listen to how the song is delivered it's like poetry man and after all of this hard shit he had the prayer Be- and the convo because I, this is why I was gonna this is this is my take on it I feel I feel his real his real thing he's a pastor 
So he, he's a great storyteller Why? Because he's a pastor Yeah You know what I'm saying? He's great with words Why? Because he's a pastor You know what I'm saying? Or whatever You know what I'm saying? It goes hand in hand with, with his calling What he does What he's good at So this is why I feel like He just happened to be lyrically And from the street man Like You see how Jeezy Jeezy may say church for the street This was church for the street Back at that time Because X was like So raw man It Absolutely. was so raw like I, I remember, they even shot uh, E video in my in my in my old neighborhood. Shout out to my old neighborhood, Elwood One Ninety Six. That's up by Dykeman. Uh, man, they shot a, got a man over there, and we just watched it. I showed you, man. I, I'm I swear they didn't have to tell us to set up for the video. <laughs> this is what we do over there daily: basketball court in the middle of the street, the fire hydrant, the pump is open. We chilling on every stoop. So I, I'm thinking one of the producers or something lived on the block or something because I, I forgot somehow we all had t-shirts even before the video and bandanas and all that. Like I remember when I first moved to the Bronx, people called me rough because I, I, I had Rough Rider t-shirts and stuff like that. But man, that energy was so dope, man. It was so raw. It Man, it turned up my block, man, because we was already always outside and a whole bunch of pit bulls and everything. And then they shot... That vid, they shot a video. That, you know what I'm saying? One of the <laughs> Rough Rider Rider affiliates on our block. Man, that just turned us up, man. Yeah, I, I, I was in Virginia and I had the Rough Rider jersey. <laughs> I had the bandana. Yeah. Like I ordered all of this from the pamphlet. Like, I, it, it, it changed Virginia too. And when the the Cash Money Rough Riders tour came to Virginia, like yo, when I swear when X came out on that stage, like. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard a reaction like that ever before. The only other thing I could kind of relate to DMX and it's somewhat relatable because it's street and it was so raw and the energy is 50 with G-Unit. How he just came out of nowhere and just blew up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but... but I'd say X X had more staying power with the music. X X did a lot of guest appearances. I highly doubt he did as much as Fifty did. But you had his dark and hell is hot, and then what? I think eight months later he dropped Flesh in My Flesh, and then like a year later he dropped, and then there was X, and like all of this stuff was super hard. Oh yeah, at the I, time. I agree. I mean the time changed. So Fifty Fifty did it. Fifty was the one that introduced the mixtape bullying. How he was just bullying everybody's beat. Switching up the, the hook on it And whatever You know what I'm saying Yeah So 50 had to go A different route with it But I mean like It was almost the same Bully move Is what I'm saying It was almost the same Kind of aggressive technique Because Man X Man Like 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 you just said Diddy had the game You know what I'm saying The only other thing We was hearing Was a little bit from From No Limit and them You know what I'm saying A little bit from um, Cash Money and them And whatever was coming Out the West But Really, it was mostly bad boy and the shiny suits, you know what I'm saying, and the Definitely. dancing. But then X came through and it was like jeans, shorts, and Tim's, and dirt bikes, and pit bulls, and no shirts, and performance Yeah, he opened shirtless. up the door for people right. like Ja Rule to come in with his right. style. Right. And, right, this is what I'm saying. It's, it's X made it possible for 50 to do what exactly. he did. Exactly, exactly. But what, what grade you give it, man? Honey. I, I gave it 102 with, I, with I the, figured it was gonna be Cause I was biased nah, but This album is amazing With man. the emoji The emoji 100 With the, <laughs> with the, the stripes <laughs> under it Like <laughs> Like timeless B Like for real Yeah I, I could put this album On at any time and Anytime Just push play I ain't gotta skip nothing I ain't even gotta nothing. skip the skit show Not even the yeah, word Not the skits nothing Just let it rock <laughs> All right, y'all. That's been our episode for this week, man. TRC. Come back next week, man. We got four albums for y'all. We got Nas, I Am. We got Game, the documentary, too. We got A Tribe Called Quest, Midnight Marauder. And we also got Usher, Confessions, man, a classic. Yeah, we hitting them with a couple classics. R.P. Fife Dog. So we got to hit them with that Tribe Called Quest. Yes, indeed, man. And uh, make sure y'all check out the instagram man at trc podcast also check out the clothing line at so loyal clothing inc um also don't forget to uh send us in uh those complaints or emails or whatever the case may be hit up the email with yeah, your man. comments email or email man trc at the report car live.com t
trc at the report and then also check out the playlist and uh yeah man feel free to holler at us man don't don't feel like you gotta hit me on the side and request some or hit diddy on the side and request some. Man, feel free to hit the email feel free to hit the uh the, the the instagram or whatever man uh you know i mean i don't mind a word of mouth you know yeah, e- either way however it gets done yeah. but you know i'm I'm, I'm, t- I'm encouraging them to feel free to hit you yeah, cool. or hit me or whatever and i'm saying don't feel like the listeners that are closer to me only gotta hit me or the you know feel yeah. free to hit up anything involving the show man either one of us will answer it regardless yeah man and on that note man peace peace <laughs>